first offering of the evening is Transit Authority of River City by Lois Bear Barr. A few words about the author. Lois Bear Barr's latest chapbook, Tracks, Homes on the L, is due to be published this fall at Finishing Line Press, where it was a finalist in the New York in the New Voices contest. Her chapbook, Biopoesis, won Poetica Magazine's first prize. Transit Authority of River City appeared in the Examined Life in the fall issue of 2013 and was read at Brain Awareness Week at Lake Forest College. Transit Authority of River City opens on a Louisville City bus where we find Allie, a runaway teen eager to leave town with a boyfriend. And we meet Judge Sam Shellman, who is plagued by dementia, yet still retains his empathy for people in need. Now let us listen and envision as Lois Reed's Transit Authority of River City. Thank you, Rob. Isn't that a great voice? Um, thanks, Oil Lamp, for having us back. And thanks to all of you for being here. This story is dedicated to my father, Edwin I. Bear. He was diagnosed with Alzheimer's in his 70s. He still went to work in downtown Louisville at the office of young lawyers who let him use the law library rent-free because although he might not remember friends' names or what he'd done five minutes before, he knew Kentucky case law by heart. They called him Judge. He'd been a police magistrate, taught at University of Louisville Law School, and served as a substitute justice of the Kentucky Supreme Court. Dad helped people from all walks of life and often saved them from themselves. The sign on the Louisville Bank and Trust read 103 degrees. Hallie's thighs were sticking to the plastic seat as she played Candy Crush to, Candy Crush to quiet her nerves. Why was the bus taking so long at Fifth and Market? If I'm late, Joy will be meaner than a snake. Oh, geez, here comes that old man again. And with the old timer was the hot looking attorney Hallie sometimes waited on at Cupid Doll Diner. He told Hallie jokes and left big tips. After lunch, he'd take the old dude to the bus and he never left until the bus driver gave him the high sign. As the man started down the aisle, Hallie pulled her backpack off the floor and plopped it down on the seat next to her. She was in a hurry today, and the old guy was so slow. Plus, sometimes he had this mothball odor. It creeped her out when he opened his bottles of pills with his bony gray fingers. Darn. Wouldn't you know it? The woman behind her offered the old man her seat. Now she'd have to listen to his cheesy songs. He always sang, take me out to the ball game when the bus went by Slugger Field, or dancing cheek to cheek when they passed Heaven Hill Distillery. Some of his songs she recognized from her grandmother's vinyl records. She loved those big black records. Once she dropped one and it shattered, she thought Granny would give her a lickin', but she shrugged. <coughs> Don't worry, sugar, it's just a thing. Okay. Hallie wanted lots of things, clothes, shoes, a diamond bracelet, and Joey promised Vegas was the place to get them. She texted her sister, Lori Sue, I'm bored, bus is late. She had a sudden pang of hunger. Last night, she and Lori Sue had eaten the leftovers of a cold pizza for dinner. Her mom, who was who knows where, had been promising to get the microwave fixed since forever. Today, Hallie got to Cupy's too late for breakfast, and she was too nervous at quitting time to grab a burger. So she pulled out a pack of spearmint gum and shoved several sticks into her mouth. She wadded up the wrappers into a big ball and tossed them on the floor. 
Double your pleasure, double your fun. <laughs> double mint gum. Judge Sam Shellman had noticed the gum wrappers rolling down by his feet. That pretty red-haired girl in front of him looked familiar. Her skimpy blouse reminded him of lost girls he'd represented in juvenile court. He remembered a nasty case, 12 years old, a victim of parental abuse. He'd gotten her a lovely foster home. She sent him a card every Christmas. What was her name? Jenny? Jeannie? Was this girl Jeannie? Jeannie, he leaned forward and asked, but the girl didn't respond. I dream of Jeannie <laughs> with the light Born like a vapor on the summer air. Sam watched trees and dust blow as a sudden storm kicked up. Wiping a circle onto the foggy glass, he caught a glimpse of the old brick warehouse where he'd spent summer afternoons as a boy volleying tennis balls with a wooden racket. A gift from sister's husband. 1928, he thought. A year before the big crash and before his brother-in-law lost his swanky supper club, Sam remembered playing golf with sister at her club. She fell down on the green of the seventh hole, a stroke. Right there in front of him, never knew what hit her. That was long before quadruple bypasses and pacemakers like his. Just thinking of sister gave him chest pain. He could take a nitroglycerin, but Eunice had begged him not to take too many. So he breathed deeply, the pain subsided a little, and his head bobbed forward. Hallie's cell phone rang out, baby, one more time. She punched the green receiver button. Hey, Joey, she said when his photo popped up. Hey, Hallie girl, where in tarnation are you? We're rolling out in 40 minutes. Sorry, Joey, we're, we're just at second in market because the bus had to wait for this old dude and now we're late. Well, you know I got to get this 10-wheeler going. I got to get it on the road by three and when you get to the end of the line, you still got to hightail it to the speedway. The truck will be unlocked, so just get in and don't let nobody see you. Couldn't you just come and get me? It's raining like crazy. It ain't raining here, and like I told you, I don't want nobody seeing me pick up a kid, so you best be here on time. Don't worry, Joey, I'll be there. Well, all right, I hope to hell you are. You never seen nothing like Vegas, little girl. It's got the best buffets in the world, and them shops will pop your eyes out. <laughs> Joey hung up. Hallie texted Lori Sue. Can you drive me to J-Town? Lori Sue answered, have to work. At this rate, Hallie would never get out of Louisville. Sam Shellman's head bobbed up with a start. Had he missed his stop, he pushed forward on his cane and rose out of his seat. Judge Shellman, don't be getting out here, the driver called back. Sam sat back down, clutching his cane and grinning. He knew this wasn't his stop. He was just testing the driver. <laughs> he would have to put in a good word about this nice young man to his friends on the board of Louisville Transit. Or did the bus company have a new name? He saluted the driver, but the driver didn't respond. Wonder what Eunice is fixing for lunch. Or had he gone to lunch with Mike and the boys from the office. He felt in his pocket for a toffee and found a note from Eunice printed in there. Don't forget the IRS forms and canceled checks, Eunice. Why did Eunice always worry about money? He had some good cases going. A good custody case for, what was her name? For goodness sakes, did his wife think he couldn't remember anything? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
the bus turned onto I-65, and the limestone outcroppings reminded him of the kids hiking behind him up the cliffs in Cherokee Park. I love to go a wandering along a mountain path. Mm -hmm. He wondered whether Eunice would fix him some tomato soup. It was chilly on this bus. He dozed off. Hallie checked the time on her cell phone, 2.40. Oh dear, she got up to ask when they would get to the end of the line. For sure the driver was looking down her tank top at the silver ring on her nipple. His deep voice boomed out. Don't you worry, miss. We should be right on time. Just sit back down. There was an empty seat across the aisle from the old man, so she sat down. Right on time in a pig's eye. If her stupid manager hadn't taken forever to tally up the tips, she would have been out of Cupies in time for the earlier bus. Her cell phone rang. Joey's picture appeared. Hey, Joey. Hey, Hallie, are you gonna get here or what? The rain's letting up and traffic's not bad on 65. Great, cause I sure do miss you. I miss you too. She felt inside her pack for the wad of money, her tips for the past two months and the fake ID Joey had gotten her. Are we gonna play the nickel slots? We're gonna play everything and then some, but you better haul your tattooed ass in here fast. I tried to get Lori Sue to drive me, but she has to work. Lori Sue? Your sister Lori Sue? Jesus almighty Christ, Hallie, did you tell her where we're going? I, I, I didn't tell her anything. Well, I sure as hell don't want your mother sending the cops out after us. My mom, that's a laugh. She'll be glad I'm gone. The line broke up, and Hallie redialed his number. Call failed. She put her phone in her pocket and put her iPod back on. As she looked around to see where the bus was, she noticed the old guy's head bump against the glass. Shellman sat up straight and looked out the window. Where was he? He thought the house on top of the hill looked like his friend John Morgan's, but he didn't remember seeing it from this angle before. He patted his chest pocket to make sure he had his nitroglycerin. Eunice would be furious if he'd forgotten it. The bus was slowing down to exit the expressway and he thought of Eunice fixing him lunch. He always liked a grilled cheese with pickles. Mmm, glorious cheese. <laughs> As the bus exited the expressway, Hallie's phone rang its tune over and over. Finally, she pulled off her headset and answered. Hi, Lori Sue. Hallie, are you all sure this joy is gonna get you back home by Sunday? I mean, if mom gets home early, what do I tell her? Don't be telling her nothing, and don't worry, Lori Sue. I'll sure miss y'all. You're coming back, aren't you? Hallie looked out the window at the rain as they passed the Breckenridge Motel. She giggled, remembering how Joey had fumbled with the zipper on her jeans, and then laughed until he darn near fell down when he saw her pink bikini pants covered with little angels. Her sister yelled, Hallie, what are you laughing at? Can y'all hear me? You are coming back, right? A thought came to Hallie. Lori Sue, I gotta go. Love you. Sometimes a big car came to pick up the old man. Maybe he'd give her a ride to J-Town. She leaned across the aisle and smiled sweetly. Mister, is there any chance y'all could give me a ride to J-Town? The old man looked at her and smiled back. We could do that. Of course, miss. The driver called out. Breckenridge and Taylorsville, Judge Shillman. Hallie jumped up with her backpack and bumped into Shillman who tottered a bit, but kept his balance by gripping the back of a seat. He tipped his hat as Hallie rushed past him. 
she jumped down the first step. When her backpack shifted, she lunged off the bus. Her cell phone and her purse landed in a puddle. Mm -hmm. Shellman descended the bus deliberately, gripping the folding doors with his left hand and his cane with his right. The warm rain felt good. He pushed the girl's glittery pink telephone away from the gutter with his cane. Miss, you dropped your phone. The pretty girl knelt to collect everything that had fallen into the water. Shellman leaned down to peer at her worried face and said, now don't you cry. You sure you can drive me? Take this and wait right here. He pulled an umbrella from his satchel, opened it, and handed it to her. Then he looked around in every direction, trying to remember which way to walk. Hallie stood at the bus stop trying to call Joey, but there was no signal on her cell phone. For sure it was ruined. The old man's jacket changed from gray-green to black and clung to his skinny shoulders as he walked to the corner. The Oldsmobile stopped right next to him. Hallie waved when she saw the big navy blue car approaching. Eunice scolded Sam. You're sopping wet. Where is your umbrella? Did you bring home the IRS papers? He shrugged sheepishly. He wiped a circle on the window and peered out at a pretty red-haired girl with a big umbrella waving at them. The car passed Hallie and turned off Breckenridge Lane. Sure, old man, you'll drive me to Jive Town when pigs fly. There wouldn't be another bus for almost an hour. Now, now I'll never get to Vegas. Mascara ran down Hallie's freckled face as she stood under the black umbrella. Eunice waved at a neighbor's car as she drove into their complex. So. How was your lunch with Michael and the boys? Sam? Sam was asleep.